Hi there, my name is Annette with Sunbeam Fabric Art. Welcome to my channel. Hey, today I'm introducing this video from inside my little sewing closet, which if you're like me, you've got some unfinished projects and some things hanging around. Um, today, we're gonna finish a quilt. So I did this quilt top not too long ago, and I will leave a link in my description for this video of how I made the quilt top. But today, we're gonna quilt the quilt. So come along with me today and I'll show you what I did. Here's the finished quilt top. You can see my supervisor approves. I'm using leftover backing that originally was 108 inches wide, but the leftover was not wide enough to cover this quilt top, so I'm going to piece two pieces together. I did have a wide enough piece of batting, so I didn't need to stitch batting together. Before I started putting this quilt together, I did press my quilt top and my backing fabric. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but sometimes it's easier to press the wrong side of the fabric so you can see the actual creases. Now I wanted to get a straight edge on this backing scrap that I'm going to be joining to the bigger piece. So what I've done is I've folded my backing strip and I'm lining that fold up with a line on my cutting mat. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my cutting mat around the other way because it's a little bit too long. So I've got a fold at the bottom of my cutting mat, and then I've got another fold up at the top of my cutting mat. What I'm trying to do here is make sure both of these folds are parallel with a line on the cutting mat. So as long as those two lines are relatively straight with my cutting mat lines, I'm going to get a nice straight edge with no bowing. And here's my nice straight edge. Now I'm able to stitch these two pieces of backing fabric together. I put my two backing pieces right sides together, took them to the sewing machine and stitched a quarter inch seam. Then I trimmed away the excess fabric. Then I pressed the seam open. Now it is time to make our quilt sandwich. So the first thing I did was put my backing fabric wrong side up on the table. Then I put my batting on top. Then I put my quilt top on top. I smooth all these layers and make sure there aren't any bumps or puckers that I need to be worried about. There are lots of ways to hold your quilt sandwich together while you're sewing it. I prefer to use these uh, large quilting basting pens. They are made especially for this kind of a job and your local quilt shop should have them. After I finish pinning the front side of the quilt, I always flip over to the back side of the uh, quilt because even though I've smoothed, smoothed everything, there still could be some puckers. Here you can see I'm taking out some pins and I'm re-smoothing it and re-pinning it. I like to trim to about an inch of my quilt top. This way the scraps I'm trimming off are, do not have stitches in them and I can use them in future projects. Thank you. 
So for quilting quilts, I like to use my walking foot on my sewing machine. You can check with your sewing machine and see if you have a walking foot or if you can get a walking foot. It just makes the layers go through the machine easier. I'm starting at one corner of my quilt and I am going to stitch a zigzag stitch from corner to corner through these blocks. If you want your lines to be straight, you can take a chalk pen, a washable chalk pen, make sure you test that. Use your ruler and draw straight lines. I am not too worried about if these lines are exactly straight, so I am not doing that, but that if you, if you want to have your lines straight, 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 just use your ruler and a chalk pen and you'll be good to go. Here's a look at this quilt top after my first round of diagonal stitching. Based on my batting recommendations, I could have stopped right here and been done with this quilt top, but I thought I would do one more layer of stitching in between these lines. So I'm gonna take this back to the machine and I'm gonna add extra diagonal lines. Before we can put binding on this quilt, we must create some truly straight edges. So I am just using my ruler. My blocks are nice and straight. I'm using my blocks to guide me to make this straight edge. There are many ways to bind a quilt. I will be showing you one method today. I have binding pre-made in rolls. Now this binding is two and a half inch strips of fabric and I have joined these strips together with a diagonal seam. And you can see that seam right here. It's a diagonal seam joining these two pieces of two and a half inch fabric together. Then I press that binding strip in half. I like to use a double thickness of binding. Um, you don't have to, but I like to. That's the place on your quilt that gets the most wear and tear and is most likely to wear out. For the beginning of my binding, I make a 45 degree fold. Then I fold my binding back in half. This creates a little pocket. When I get all the way around the quilt, the tail end of the binding is going to tuck into that pocket. And I start my stitching about five or six inches past my little pocket. I like to stitch my binding to the back of my quilt first with a straight stitch. When I get to the end of one side of my quilt, I stop when I get about a quarter inch away from the end, then I stitch off 
to the corner at a 45 degree angle. Here you can see how I stitched off at that angle. Now I'm going to fold the fabric up at that same 45 degree angle. Then I'm going to fold the fabric back down upon itself. And now I'm ready to stitch this side of the quilt. Once I make it all the way around the quilt, I am going to trim this tail end of the binding at the same angle as my pocket, giving me about a half inch or so that I can tuck into the pocket. Once that's done, we'll finish stitching this binding down to the back of the quilt. Next, I'm going to turn this binding from the back of the quilt around to the front of the quilt. I'm getting this started just using some clips to hold this binding into place um, because I want to show you how I do the corners. When we get to the corner, it should look like this with a little bit of a 45 degree angle on side two. And that is where we can get this nice mitered look. Now you can see that I am stitching this binding down to the front of the quilt and I am using a zigzag stitch to tack it down. And here I'm pulling around what I have just finished stitching, just so you can see how this looks with the zigzag stitch. When you make it all the way around the quilt, you are done. Making the quilt sandwich and finishing this quilt took me three hours. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you back again real soon.